am Natasha Ferguson Michelson. I'm going to get us started. I'm part of the search education team here at Google. Many of you have uh, attended our webinars in the past, and I'm pleased to be joined us today. I'm particularly pleased because we have with us today Esther Wojcicki, who is a local high school um, journalism teacher and also the Vice Chair of Creative Commons. And I know that I'm very much looking forward to learning today myself about Creative Commons. Um, I, as I said, am Natasha, and you can find me in chat. Esther is going to be doing speaking, and so if you have any questions at all, please pose them to me in chat, and I will get them, bring them to Esther's attention, and we will, of course, have a question and answer period at the end of the hour. So I'd like to welcome Esther and hand it over to her. Thanks, Esther. Thank you, Tasha. Very exciting to be here and very exciting to be doing this webinar. And I am delighted that there are so many people that are interested in knowing more about Creative Commons. Um, as you know, um, I spend a lot of time thinking about Creative Commons and a lot of time working with students. And I find that students are very excited about it when they learn about it. but most of them have never heard of it before I bring it up. And what I'm trying to do now is to see how we can spread the word about Creative Commons to students all over the world, because it's useful not just in a few countries, but it's useful to students everywhere. So I'm going to start at a pretty basic level, because I don't know who's out there in the audience, and so I thought I would start with the, with the basics. So forgive me if you already know all this information, but I'm going to start basically with copyright. Like, what is copyright and copyright law? And while a lot of people mouth the word and say copyright, in fact, they don't really know what it is. And uh, one thing that is really important for everybody to know is that copyright, at least in the United States and in many countries worldwide, um, it exists for the life of the author or the creator plus 70 years. So that's a pretty long time. So if something that you have copyrighted um, has not been changed with the Creative Commons license, it's going to be very difficult to share, very difficult to use um, for a pretty long time because most people today live at least 70 years, plus 70 years, that's 140 years. It's a pretty long time to have something locked up. So on any given day, um, there are hundreds, possibly millions of students that are committing copyright infringement, just in basic daily activities, primarily not because they're you know, outlaws or anything, but more because they just don't know. And they figure that anything that's out there on the web is just free to take. I mean, it's there, why not just help myself? Kind of like going into the store, self-serve store, and it's like, oh, there it is on the shelf. I think I'll just take it. They forget that you actually have to um, pay for it. Well, with copyright, you know, let's face it, people, authors, creators that copyright their work, they too need to earn a living. And so that is something that is really important for students to know. And most students don't know that. It's kind of hard to imagine that they don't. You know, so I, I have um, 14, 15, 16, and 17 year olds, actually even 18 year olds in my classes every day. And uh, so by the time they are 16 and 17 in my classes, they know when I say Creative Commons, they know what it is. But the 14 year olds, they look at me with uh, big wide eyes. So what is copyright? It's all rights reserved. All. Can't do anything with it. Um, copyrights are a set of exclusive rights granted to creators of original works of authorship. That means that you cannot copy it, distribute it, publicly perform it, publicly display it, build upon it, or digitally distribute it. How's that for locking it up? <laughs> copyright. And um, so, as I mentioned, sometimes it's important because authors do need to have, you know, financial returns on their work, but uh, 
at other points, um, people basically, students, are helping themselves, whether it's copyrighted or not. So uh, copyright covers all these forms of creativity, literature, music, architecture, software, choreography, everything creative. So the other thing I was thinking that students need to understand, teachers need to explain, is intellectual property. So like, what is intellectual property? And I bet if you went out on the street, just stopped somebody on the street randomly and asked them what intellectual property was, they would not know. They would, they would think it's some term that is, um, you know, just a legal term. They would not really understand what intellectual property is. So part of copyright and explaining copyright to students, you have to explain intellectual property. So really, it's copyright protects intellectual property. So intellectual property is like ideas and things that belong to you. It's kind of like, you know, the furniture in your house, only you can't see intellectual property frequently. You know, you know about it. It's like books or ideas or things like that. Actually, ideas are not copyrightable. But all the other things I mentioned, that is intellectual property. And um, students need to know what it is. So it goes hand in hand with understanding copyright. Also, the other thing you need to know is that copyright is the default all worldwide, pretty much. So that means whatever you write on the web, on a blog, on a napkin, anywhere, um, it's all rights reserved. You own it. You don't have to apply for a license. You have it already. Last a really long time, as I mentioned, could last up to 140 years. And by the way, it keeps getting expanded, these copyright laws. So people will ask questions, well, you know, I'm an educator, and so, you know, I know that things are really different in some countries in the world, actually specifically the United States and Israel and maybe Japan. We have this thing called fair use. That means, gee, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, I can just use it anyway. All those things about copyright, they just don't apply to me. And to some degree that is true, but there is no blanket protection. So for example, I as a teacher, I mean I can Xerox certain parts of a book, but I cannot Xerox the whole book. I have the right to use articles that I download from the web for my classes, but I don't have the right to republish those articles. I don't have the right to put them on my blog. Um, so there's a, it really relies on a host of other factors, fair use, and frequently can only be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but as I, as I know, I'm sure that's true in educational institutions worldwide, that people are just, you know, saying, even though it might not be true, um, that I'm an educator, I can use it. So as I mentioned, copyright law varies drastically from country to country. We have about 54 countries, I believe, that have been ported with Creative Commons licenses. So the reason they are ported is because every country is somewhat different. So they need to have a special individual way to license their work. It just makes it easier. Uh, we like to take advantage of or take into consideration all the special needs of each country. So that's why they're ported and that's why um, copyright law, um, and it just varies from country to country. But a lot of creators want to share, especially globally, and educators already participate in sharing and remixing culture. And I hope you all like my little picture there. Um, I love little stuffed animals, but these aren't stuffed. These are real sharing. Care and read this. Um, so in a digital world, teachers and students alike are creators of copyrighted content. We have a choice about how we want to share our creativity and knowledge with others. So if you write something, you, you have a choice. Do you want to have it copyrighted or do you want to have it shared? So if you want to have it copyrighted and um, you want people to write you lots of letters asking for permission, that's probably one way to go. But thanks to Creative Commons, you can pre-authorize sharing. 
So you are not giving up your ownership of the material or the thing you've created. You are simply pre-authorizing sharing. And you're pre-authorizing it in specific ways. You can choose which freedoms you want to grant and which freedoms you want to keep. And I'm going to go through this um, briefly. Like, how do you want to license your work? Also, the other thing I want to make clear is if you license one work with a Creative Commons license, that doesn't mean you have to license all your work. Not to mention the fact that you don't have to license the entire work with a Creative Commons license. If you want to just license a chapter, just license, if you're a poet, you want to just license a few poems. If you're a singer, you can, or a song creator, you just can license a few songs. You don't have to license everything. So how does Creative Commons work? It develops copyright licenses, which are simple, standardized ways to grant copyright permissions to your work. Each license has different conditions. Which license you choose will depend on how you want to share your work. So here are four conditions. Attribution is the first one. So that means anything that is written, anything that you want to share, you want to have attribution. That is, you want somebody to give you credit for having done the work you did. Another condition is share alike. And share alike means that if you use my work, that means you also must share it with the same conditions that I shared it with you. You can't suddenly change that. You must use exactly the same conditions. Non-commercial means that you don't want to have any commercial uses of your work. You don't want people selling it. But non-commercial is a little bit more complicated than that, actually. So non-commercial can also mean that uh, people are confused in some sense. They're like, does non-commercial mean that they can't have any ads on their website? Um, we'll talk about that, actually, in, in a minute. And no derivative work means you can't make any, you can't change it. You just have to use it exactly the way I have it. No changing of a single word, not even a period. It's all got to be exactly the same. So this, I'm going to go through it in a little bit more detail. Um, so do you want to receive attribution for your work? Well, I think everybody does. You know, if you did all that work, well, why not get some credit for it? And um, so how do you get the credit? Well, you can get the credit with the Creative Commons license, and I'm going to go into more detail later on how that happens. But if, let's say, for example, you don't want any credit, you just want to put it out there, you can put it on, I don't have a slide about this, it's called CC0. CC0 means people can just use it, and you don't care whether they attribute it to you or not. But um, I had, I introduced this to my students, and um, this was the license that they were the most interested in. They all wanted their work to be shared around the web, and they wanted everybody to know who they were. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like teenagers to you? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, they, they, this is their favorite license. So now, this is no derivative. Do you want others to be able to modify, adapt, translate, or otherwise remix your work? If you don't, then you put this on. That's kind of like a big stop sign. Do not, no derivatives here. Um, but that means no one can translate your work. That means if it's in English, it has to stay in English. Japanese has to stay in Japanese. Whatever language you translate, you started in, that's the language it has to stay. So that is actually a bit of a problem because a lot of the really good things in the world are translated into other languages so that other people can enjoy them. So that's kind of an important thing to consider before you put in a no derivative license. And then people like to remix work. So like, for example, again, I as a teacher, I take part of one person's assignment and I mix it together with another person's assignment and then I put my own stuff in it and then lo and behold, I produce this handout which I give to my students and I am really excited that I did not have to kill myself reinventing the wheel, and I credit the people 
whose work I use. So they see it on the handout. And one of the reasons that I do that is because if they see it on a regular basis, then they understand it. And um, otherwise, you know, they, they too don't understand. It. How does this work? So this is, this is the remixing aspect. Um, now this is commercial work. And I thought I was going to talk a little bit more about commercial work. So as I said, commercial can be a little bit hard to define. And the reason it can be hard to define is like, what is commercial work? So it's easy to figure out like if a big company wants to use your work, a publishing company, you know, uh, then you know for a fact that's commercial. But as I mentioned before, what if you are a nonprofit and you are using um, ads for sustainability on your website? Does that mean you're commercial? And our definition is no, you are not commercial. And Creative Commons actually did research into this. We wrote a paper about it, and we've had conferences about it. And just so you know, whenever you have a controversial topic like this, whenever you have a lot of people who have a lot of ideas, in fact, it has not yet been resolved <laughs> what is non-commercial. The only thing I can tell you is that the most obvious uses of non-commercial work are the ones that are pretty much accepted. And um, if you have a web, a non fit and you have a website with ads, that we that seems to be accepted as well. You know, so you can use that work. Um, but if you have any specific questions, please send them to me, and I'll forward them to the Creative Commons lawyers. And my email address is really easy to remember. It's Esther at CreativeCommons.org. So um, just send me any of your questions, and we'll be happy to to answer questions like that. Um, so do you want others to share modifications of your work under the same license? Share alike? Do you? Or don't you care? If you don't care, don't use them. If you want them to do the same thing you did, use them. Um, so some people are, you know, we, ha we try to have a license to make everybody happy. So some people were very concerned about, you know, my goodness, I would do all this work, share it, and then somebody would be sharing it with a different type of license. So then we have this option for you. It helps to make sure that, you know, as many people as possible, their needs are being met. So if you, these are the different license options. If you go on the Creative Commons website, this is what you'll see. You'll see these six different licenses. So you see, we can push, put them all together. Um, so you have you can have buy by itself, you can buy share alike, buy non-commercial, buy no derivatives, and then you can have, if you really have more restrictions, you can have buy non-commercial share alike, or buy non-commercial no derivatives. So as you can imagine, the more restrictions that there are in the license, the less it travels around the web. Because of course, you know, more restrictive stuff just doesn't travel as much. So if you want something to travel around the web virally, if you want this, you know, network of thousands, millions of people um, using your stuff and helping you spread your ideas, then use the license that is probably the least restrictive, which is CC BY. And so how do you get it? So you go to creativecommons.org, choose. Well, actually, just the creativecommons.org, and there'll be a license option there, and you just choose your license. And so what does this look like? Well, allow commercial uses of your work. You first answer this question, yes, no. See there's a little I there next to it? Well, if you can't remember exactly what this means, you click on the I, and then there's a little bubble that comes up and explains it to you. Allow modifications of your work, mm, yes as long as others share alike or no. So you pick the answer and jurisdiction of your license. Is it an international license? If I click on this thing, you'll see every single country that is all 54 countries that have Creative Commons licenses are listed there and you can just pick your own jurisdiction. Then tell us the format of your work, like what format is it in, the title of your work, attribute the work to, to who should you attribute the work to? Where did it come from? To you if you were the originator? That's great. If you attribute it to a URL, where did it come from? 
So you have an option of how to attribute. Um, choose which style button you want to have on your web page. See, you have two different buttons. Don't like either one? I guess you probably modify it yourself somehow, but those are the buttons. Um, and so now, how do you get it on your website? Well, here it is. Um, later on in this presentation, I'm actually going to go online and show you exactly how to do it. But here's a um, slide that shows you how to do it. Notice that what you just do is copy this text at the bottom and paste it into your website. That's it. So it's not very hard to do. And we actually also have an option for Blogger and WordPress. So if you publish something on Blogger or WordPress, you can do the same thing. WordPress has, uh, has the option, and Blogger also has an option. Same kinds of questions, and then you get some kind of little code, and you, there you are. Paste it in. So Creative Commons is built on copyright law. It's really important for you to know that. does not replace substitute or provide an alternative to copyright. It's on top of copyright. So you have the copyright, you're just pre-authorizing sharing in your own special way. Does not preclude fair use. It picks up where fair use leads off. Does not affect rights not covered by copyright, such as publicity or privacy rights. It's irrevocable and perpetual. So this was a question that came up when I was doing this before. So irrevocable, so that means once you put it on your work, you cannot change it as long as it's up there. But that doesn't mean that you cannot put your work on another site and put a different license on it. And so I got this um, from the Creative Commons lawyer that says, basically, so you need to understand this because it's kind of important and somewhat complicated. An author can decide to stop publishing the work, take the work down from her website or his website. The copies of the work already in circulation can continue to be used under the license applied for the entire period of applicable copyright. A license mentions this specifically and does not impose an obligation on the licensor to keep the work posted forever or to maintain indefinitely a copy of the work with the license attached. Any, but anything out in the public stays just as it is. So the other question was like the last one here, non-exclusive, well, allows for dual licensing. What does that really mean? I mean, but some of these terms, you know, release. Anyway, here, here's what it means. Be sure to send us a question if you don't understand. Non-exclusive means that the licensor is free to apply other licenses to the same work. That is, if the teacher chooses a non-commercial license, our licenses don't say that the only license she can ever use for the work is non-commercial. She can choose to license the same work for commercial purposes using a CC license or a privately negotiated license. Dual licensing means applying two licenses to the same work. People use maybe even three licenses to the same work. So um, I just got a question on how CC0 is different from the public domain. So CC0 is something you elect to do. Um, you put that on your work. Public domain is work that is over a certain number of years old that automatically goes into the public domain. So all the works from the 18th, 19th, early 20th century are all in the public domain. But those authors did not elect to put a CC0 license on it. They just, it was the time factor that put them into the public domain. So I don't know, hopefully that, um, that answers the question. Um, maybe there's another question coming. Um, no commercial use, um, but you do want attribution? Uh, no attribution. No commercial use, no attribution. 
Um, no commercial use. Uh, you know what? Actually, I don't know if you can license something without the attribution part of it. I think um, I haven't heard of people doing that because we assume that everybody wants credit. And um, so I do not think there is a license option for that. Um, so actually, and then I wanted to just talk a little bit more about fair use. So fair use is a concept under US law. And Israel and Japan, maybe, in the next few months. And maybe a few other company, countries. Internationally, politically correctly, to think about fair use is um, those works not regulated by copyright or permitted as exceptions to copyright, exceptions and limitations. So fair use is an exception and limitation to copyright. And so that's just one way of thinking about it. Sure, there's a lot of other people out there that might have some additional ways they want to um, describe it. So if you just go into any law library around the world, you will see thousands of books with 500 to 1,000 pages where everybody is discussing all these details in excruciating detail. And um, so I'm just giving you an, an overview, hopefully, that will be helpful. And so are there any other questions at this point that I can answer on just this part? It's fair use. Yeah. All right. So all Creative Commons licenses are unique because they are expressed in three different ways. And it's kind of important for you to know. So the first way is machine readable. So that means whatever you license with the Creative Commons license is read by a machine. So you don't have to run around to everybody's computer and make sure that it has the right, right tags on it. The second way is human readable. That means you can actually read it with your eyes. You can see it. And the third way is legal code. So we have a lot of lawyers and they all make sure that the legal code works. And they've tested it and they all they have lots of meetings, I'm sure. And uh, so the legal code. So these are the three different ways that the Creative Commons licenses are unique because they uh, they cover pretty much everything that you would have to worry about. So here's a lawyer readable legal code. And you can pass that to any of your lawyers that would like to read it. I personally find it a little difficult to understand. But um, some people find it really interesting. Here's the human readable deed. This is a little bit more user friendly and it explains everything. So this is what you would get. You go on the Creative Commons website, you can see it. Um, so it explains that you are free to share, to remix under the following conditions. So this is what a deed looks like on a license that you select. And this is all for your computers out there. This is what machine readable metadata looks like. A um, little hard to understand, but computers all like it. And so let's say, for example, that you're looking for something that is Creative Commons licensed. Well, these are all the different ways that you can look. Creative Commons website has this search engine, CC Search, but all these other websites also. So Google also has a way to search for Creative Commons licensed. Um, work. Google Images, Gemendo, Open Clip Art Library, Cinex, Cinexpress, Wikimedia Commons, YouTube, Left TV, European, Flickr, Photopedia. So right now this is a work in progress. Creative Commons just put this up recently and at some point in the near future you should be able to go and click on each of these and get directly to that website that will take you to that work. So right now, if you're interested in finding Creative Commons license to work, you can just type your, your inquiry into the search bar above. And 
it will come up, but it's, there will be, um, this is going to be um, changed in the next few months, so you can just keep an eye on it. So this is an array, you can go to search creativecommons.org, that is another way to find it. And here are the jurisdictions that have already been ported. Oh, I said 54, there's 52, there's about six more that are in progress at the moment. And uh, so these are all different countries that already have Creative Commons licenses that are operating. And we also have affiliates in most of the, uh, pretty much all of these countries, uh, which means that there are people in the country that are working with government on Creative Commons licensing. There are about 500 million works in the world that have Creative Commons licenses. So one of the things that is really important to explain to students, and this is something that I spend a lot of time on, is when you are looking for something that you want to use in your work or your blog, you have a choice. You have a choice of the copyrighted work, which is not something you should be taking without permission. Or you have a choice of Creative Commons licensed work. And if students know that there is a choice with 500 million works, they will most frequently pick the Creative Commons work. So I have, in my program at Palo Alto High School, I have more than 500 students that are electing to take journalism. And as you can imagine, they publish um, newspaper, three magazines, they're online, they have uh, two television shows, and they use a lot of creative material. So we tell them that if you want to use any of these materials in your story or whatever it is that you're creating, you want to go to Creative Commons. And so instead of being like a, a police person that micromanages them, I just tell them about this. And the fact that it's there and that they know that it's there, uh, I never have to worry about it anymore. Nobody is taking stuff out of the copyright pile. They're taking it out of the Creative Commons pile voluntarily without a lot of supervision. But that's because they know it's there and they know there's a lot of choice. And the same for music and videos. Um, by the way, I'm not sure that all of you know, that YouTube now has Creative Commons options, licensing all the videos. If you upload something on YouTube, you have an option to put a Creative Commons license on it. So other people can take your video and share it and use it. So um, and my students really like it. And the Creative and the Palo Alto High School website um, is completely Creative Commons licensed. All the work on it is Creative Commons. And it's all licensed with CC BY because that enables the work to be treated um, into other languages. And I think the website for that, I thought I put it on the resource page, but maybe not. So it is voice.paly.net. And if anybody's interested in looking at the student work, you're welcome to. We have a um, newspaper called the Campanile. Um, magazine called Verde, it's a news magazine, Viking, it's a sports magazine, we have a literary magazine, um, and, uh, we have two television shows, both called In Focus, yes, that's it, voice.pally.net, and um, see, did I forget anything? Uh, here's a question. Oh, CC licenses. Yes, CC licenses apply on top of each country's own copyright rules. That is correct. They do not replace them. They work on top of those rules. So that's why those licenses are ported. So nobody wants to um, disrupt what is going on in the country in terms of copyright law. We just want to work with the copyright laws. And so that's why they are on top of each country's copyright laws. And so if there's a question ever, again, you know, you can send me an email address. As I mentioned, we have lawyers that are happy to work um, on this. And just last month, um, actually two weeks ago in September, uh, there was an international, was a global meeting 
for Creative Commons, Warsaw, Poland. And um, pretty much everybody, 54 countries, we have them all represented there. So here is Creative Commons in education. It's a little bit more about how is it being used in education today. So the reason there's a picture there of all those kids looking like they're behind bars, well, actually, they're outside and the bar is on the inside, so you don't have to worry that they're all trapped. But in fact, this is symbolic of what happens to kids when they cannot get materials that they want online. And um, so they're trapped. In a lot of countries, they are, because they're bound by laws that don't allow them to access open materials. Creative Commons licensed works. So there are language barriers, as I mentioned. If, it, if you put a no derivatives license on, how can you access the stuff? Language barriers. Discovery barriers. You know, you can't even find this stuff. It's like, where is it? Technical barriers, because it's not licensed that way. Um, cultural barriers. So there's all kinds of issues that happen where students worldwide cannot find the things if it's not licensed with the Creative Commons license. So the language barriers, here's MIT OpenCourseWare. And if you're not familiar with it, I would like to recommend that you become familiar. They have all their courses. Literally the entire university is online for free. That includes all the lecture notes, tests, and lectures. And you just go online and you can get it for free. And um, Open Courseware Consortium, called OCW, they have 350 universities that are online. I don't have a slide for that, but all 350 of those universities also have their course materials online for free. You can download that to your mobile device, you know, your iPod or your Android or whatever phone you have. And, you know, standing in line waiting for something, you can open it up and do something that's actually interesting besides just be bored, which is what I used to do before I had my smartphone. So here's an example of MIT OpenCourseWare translated into Spanish. So since their courses are all cc by license, they can translate. Um, they can translate easily. Um, so, you know, you can translate it into any language. You know, whatever language um, is interesting. Actually, we had a big delegation from China at our global conference. And um, I'm sure that a lot of these courses are being translated into Chinese. And they have the right to do that. They don't have to write a note to MIT, you know, can we please translate? You just have the right to translate. You have the right to modify, copy, remix, whatever is important to you. I mean, this is basically um, intellectual property of mankind. You know, we all share in this. Next slide here. So discovery barriers. Um, so we have machine read readable metadata. And we have a project going now where we're trying to help all search engines work together, making sure that the machine-readable metadata is standardized so that all search engines can find the materials. And this project is called schema.org. Um, if you're interested in being part of that, again, send me an email. Um, and we're working, not, it's not just Google, it's Google, Yahoo, and Bing. We're all working together to make sure that all these materials are available all over the web for everybody. Um, and that the machine-readable metadata is actually something that enables, and it enables you to find it and enables you to share it. Again, this is the um, CC search that is part of that. And um, if I go in the back the wrong way. Okay, so here's another thing that you would like perhaps to know about. So this is books without barriers. So we have throughout the world a lot of people with disabilities and who cannot access materials the same way that everybody else can. And this is the largest um, 
books and periodical sharing site for people with disabilities. It is all Creative Commons licensed, and you can translate it into any language you would like. And um, let's see, anything else about this? Any questions about this? So here's something else. This was the, the website from um, South Africa. And they have all kinds of information on there. It's again Creative Commons license. You can take the information from that website and you can use it on your website. And it doesn't matter where in the world this is coming from. You know, we all have information and materials um, that are interesting for everybody. So now I've got a question, are there special ways to cite Creative Commons work? And so what would be interesting, I think for all of you, is uh, there's a resources page that Tasha was kind enough to set up. And on that resources page are all these handouts that have been created for teachers and they have that information, like how you are there ways to cite this, the work for students. And um, I would just suggest that you go on the website and find those. Uh, we will be adding to it. You will be getting the link because I guess if the link's not up there quite yet. Oh, it's in your webinar archives page. And um, we will be getting the link there. So what I wanted to do now is to go on to um, the website actually itself if I can figure out how to do this. Here we are with Google Chrome. And hopefully you can see that. So we're going to go to creativecommons.org. That's the new website that we have. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with this website. But this is what the website looks like today. So we have here, this is the mission statement. You can help people see um, what the mission statement is, um, and I don't know if you can see this, but here is the mission statement over here. I get to draw with this exciting tool. Yeah, there it is, mission statement. Um, then this is where you get the license. You just go and click how to get a license, very simple. Um, you're looking for Creative Commons Works. This is where that search engine was, find Creative Commons licensed work. Global network. This tells you about the global network. Let's see if I can um, go over here and get some more. So here's something else that might be interesting for you. Um, these are case studies right here. And the case studies are how is it being used around the world? Well, I don't know if you know, Al Jazeera and the White House have licensed all their work with Creative Commons licenses. Means you can just take that work and use it. Um, there are a lot, there are tons of case studies in here. And what we would find really interesting and helpful is if you have any interesting way that you're using Creative Commons, we would love to have your case study. So um, Tasha is going to tell you how to share in the chat. And um, also, can we put those on the resource mm -hmm. pages too? That would be great. Um, so this part over here, this is the global network, you know, so you can see who's using it. Um, and this is a store. If you want to buy something, like a Creative Commons t-shirt or a button or things like that, my students love the buttons. And there's stickers and things like that. As you know, we're a nonprofit, so all the money that we collect goes pretty much to supporting Creative Commons. And let's see if we have any other things. So I was going to show you how to do the license here, just to give you another example. So here is the license. I'm just on the website. License right here. So allow commercial use of your work. Yes, I think I will. Allow modifications of your work. Um, I'm going to pick yes as long as others share alike. And see, if I can't remember what it says, I just click here and, oh, there's a nice little 
thing that tells me how to use it. And which jurisdiction am I in? So let me see, where am I here? Oh, okay, so look at all those different jurisdictions. So I'm in the United States, so I pick the United States. Wherever you are, you just pick wherever you are. Tell us the format of your work. So is it audio, video, image, text, data set? So I would pick, um, the most of the time I do text title of the work, so I'd have to pick a title of the work. I don't actually have a title of the work right here, but I would pick a title. I attribute the work to a specific, to my name, so I attribute it to myself or to whoever. Attribute the work to a URL. You paste the URL in here that you attribute your work to. Um, source work, the URL. Any other, if there's any other permissions that the URL has, you put those there, and then you select the license. So do we have any more questions um, coming? That um, I do want to ask about whether the White House information is all No, the White House information is not already in the public domain. It was licensed with the Creative Commons license. And it is hard to believe that it was not in the public domain and was not free and easily shareable. But there was a battle, uh, I don't even want to mention this battle, but the battle was should American taxpayer work be shared with the world for free? And the answer with for some, some of the more conservative people was no, no, we definitely shouldn't share our government sponsored work. Um, but then the forces that um, other forces with a little bit more vision and clarity, especially since we seem to be um, supporting the world in multiple other ways, um, said yes, this was a good idea. And so that's why there is, um, the work has been licensed with Creative Commons licenses because people want it to be shared. Can you demo searching for CC in Google? Oh yes, I'll be happy to demo searching for CC in Google. All right, so here we go. Go to Google. But do we have any other questions on the before I leave this page? Any other questions on this page? We're good on that. Okay. So CC for Google. So go to Google.com. Here we are. And so remember there used to be a little thing over here. Well, it's not there anymore. And as uh, can I get rid of that? Yeah, I know it is, but I need to get rid of all these things. Okay, so now you see, I just I just want you to know, everybody, there used to be a little advanced search thing here, and the advanced search thing is missing. But it has been moved. They've had a redesign of the house. And here it is. It's under this little wheel. And you see, there it is, advanced search. So I click on advanced search. Now, one of the things I think would be great if Google would do would be make this more intuitive and more easily findable. I mean, yeah, there's a suggestion for Google. All right, now, <laughs> so now let's see, need more tools. <laughs> find web pages that have uh, reading level. Oh, so by the way, you can find the reading level in case you're interested in that. Um, that, I don't know if any of you have seen that. See, it shows all the different basic reading level, intermediate reading level, and advanced reading level. Okay, so the file path, file type is here. Any language search. So you're looking around, it's like, where is it? Okay, so in, sorry to tell you this, but you have to click another link right here. So it's not just one link, two links. There it is, ta-da, and. So what it tells you, usage rights. You see where it says usage rights? So now it's not filtered by any license. So here you click, and there it is. Free to use or to share. Free to use or share even commercially. Free to use, share, or modify. And free to use, share, or modify even commercially. So why doesn't Google use Creative Commons licenses per se and say Creative Commons? Well, I think the main reason is they want everybody to understand it. And they want everybody to, to know what is, what, what, what's happening. And sometimes, as I mentioned when I first started, not everybody knows what a Creative Commons license is. 
and as a result, maybe they won't understand it. So this explains it. You don't really even have to explain it. Um, here it is, free to use or share, you know, so it's like attribution. Maybe you have a student that doesn't know what attribution means. So this is pretty easy for students to understand. All right, so let's say we're looking for something. What are we going to pick? Let's see, which one do I want to do? Pick it by license, not about free to use or share. How's that? All right, and now. I'm going to pick something with a web page. Let's see, which words do I want? How about uh, global warming? I think we're all experiencing that together. Um, so let's see, global warming. Let's see what I get if I click on global warming. So I go down here and I'm going to click on global warming. Notice it's like right here. There. And oh, there it is, global warming. And notice what it says here. Search only pages that are free to use or share. So all this stuff that I have here, that all my results, this is all free to use or share. Let's see, did I get a few? Oh my god, I've got a lot of them. See, all the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, only even more than ten pages, tons of pages. And um, so of course the first result is Wikipedia, not surprising because Wikipedia is all licensed with Creative Commons licenses. So it's not surprising that it's Wikipedia. And the, but all this is free to use or share. How's that? So all you have to do is attribute it to where you got it from. Um, let's see, what other things do we have besides Wikipedia? We have the images. Let's take a look at the images for global warming. Related use. Oh, by the way, look at, they moved the advanced searches over here now. Hey, <laughs> I thought the advanced search was over here. Oh, no, nope. they moved it for images. It's over here. So just so you know where it is, I don't want to confuse anybody, and I want to make sure that you know where it is. So here, we're going to circle where advanced search is on images. I can do that. Let me get it. No, I can't get it. Circle. Did you? No. I'm sorry. It's showing. It's showing. Well, as long as you can find it, that's the key. And um, so these are these are images that you can use. Free, open images. You don't have to take anything out of the copyright pot. I mean, there's just, as I mentioned, millions of images here that are already free to share. So why would you? Oh, wow. Um, why would you ever want to use any others? So this is this is basically how you use um, Google Share. So let's say I'm an English teacher, so I'm looking for Romeo and Juliet. Okay, here we are, Romeo and Juliet. So here are everything that I would need with Romeo and Juliet. And wow, there's even one from the nerdy teacher. So um, Google really does a great job of helping, and there's actually even more materials and more a better search function that is coming, and um, it will probably be, it will be available starting next year with something you probably don't know about. But yes, it's more open educational resource materials that will be easily findable. And that is um, something that you should just keep your eyes open for. So now I think I'm going to go back to the presentation, unless anybody has any questions here. Do you have any other questions on how this is done? OK, I better hurry. <laughs> Getting talkative. Well, maybe I'm already. So I don't know how many of you know about this website, but um, if you don't, it's a good one to check. And so innovation, that's another thing that Creative Commons licensing supports, innovation. So flat world knowledge, you know how many of you know about flat world knowledge? It's a way to publish materials, books, um, using Creative Commons license. Notice it's free, online, affordable, open license, customizable by educators. Here's a really exciting thing. 
right here. You can take chapters from other people's books and you can just put them in your book. And you, of course, acknowledge where you got it. But it just facilitates this. Now, this just happens to be a book about financial accounting. And, I mean, maybe you're writing a book about, you know, for children. Or maybe you're writing a book about how to search. Or you could even write a book about Creative Commons. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, but anyway, all these um, options are available. And I would like to recommend, you know, just go to Flatwell Knowledge. They've sort of revolutionized um, book publishing with Creative Commons licensing. And here again is, so innovation. We're looking for a lot of innovation. Of course, this is Google, which I just went through. This is, again, the advanced search, which I just went through. Hopefully you all understand. This is part of the presentation. In case you want to use my presentation, please be, for, be um, welcome. You're welcome to use my presentation anywhere you like. So it's just an attribution only license on this presentation. You can modify it. You can add slides to it. You can subtract slides from it. You can do any of those. So here's a book that Creative Commons published. It's called The Power of Open. Um, and again, of course, it is with the Creative Commons license, so people can use it. And you might be able, you can find this on the website. And here are case studies. So case studies are, as I mentioned earlier, it's like how is Creative Commons being used worldwide? You personally can go and find out other ways that it's being used. But the thing that is exciting for us is if you might want to please upload your case studies. We would love to know how you're using Creative Commons. And so there's an email, I mean the website, so make it easy for you to do. So as I mentioned, this is, this is the last slide, and it is free for you to use. And so now I would like to ask for questions. I have a total of about four minutes. Sorry, but it's so short. And um, so Tasha's going to read me the question. So the first question is, if I make my presentation Creative Commons um, attribution, but it doesn't actually have a permanent URL, how can it be licensed? If I have a presentation without a permanent URL. What do you, do you know about SlideShare? So making a presentation without a permanent URL, you can still put a Creative Commons license on your um, put it, you can put the license on your presentation and one thing I would like to suggest is maybe you could put it in Google Docs and um, that's one place and then actually if you put it in Google Docs, Google Docs gives you the option to share it publicly online but there is also SlideShare. I don't know if you're familiar with SlideShare. It's a great place and I have a lot of stuff on SlideShare uh, all licensed with Creative Commons Works. Um, the next question is, if someone misuses someone else's Creative Commons license, how would the owner know of the misuse, and what can they do about the misuse? Uh, so they can notify the person who is misusing it. If they Obviously, they must know it's being misused, because otherwise they wouldn't be having a complaint. So they can notify the person or send an email message to them, and... Um, the other thing they can also do is if they, again, they need legal advice of some kind. Um, we don't, Creative Commons doesn't really act as a lawyer. We give out a lot of advice that so you could then send an email to Creative Commons. Any other questions? Well, so if there are no other questions, I want to thank all of you for coming to this webinar. I'd also like to invite you to the Creative Commons office in Mountain View. Should you happen to come to the Bay Area, we'd be very happy to have you come visit. And um, also, if you have any other um, ideas for Creative Commons, we'd be delighted to hear them. And um, so just send, it, send us emails, or you can go on the Creative Commons website and send emails there as well. So thank you very much. Very happy that you all joined.